Hey everyone, you probably couldn't tell, but winter is coming. It doesn't really look like it today, but winter's coming and I know a lot of you have questions about heating. How are you gonna heat the van in the winter? Do you go propane? Do you go one of those little butane ones or kerosene or do you light a candle and put a tear out whatever pot on top of it? But there's so many other options. Do you buy the big expensive like S-bar heaters or do you buy the cheap China ones? What do you do? It's so much confusing information out there. And I know for me, a lot of that stuff is just like, it just goes by me. I don't, if I can't pronounce it, what S, S bar, S bar, S, whatever, what, what best, whatever. I see, I can't even pronounce the names of those things. So for me, I chose to go the propane option mainly for money. So I have an Olympian Wave 3 heater in my van and it's done me very, very well. So I can only give you opinions on the Buddy heater and the Olympian Wave 3. And I've made videos about this previously on my channel. So we're not gonna dive into all that stuff myself. I'm gonna leave it up to someone who's kind of in the van build industry. So today we're back here with Madison from Ray Outfitted. Madison. Hello. <laughs> and we're gonna discuss some heating options and stuff for your van because they've seen it all. They've been experienced in all different times of like climate and weather and they've seen and done van builds with people who have all different kinds of heaters they've had customers come here with heating problems who have done things right done things wrong so they kind of they've had their fingers in all elements of this whole heating thing where i have no clue on this stuff so all i all i would give you is hearsay information and instead of me running my mouth about things i don't know i'm going to let somebody else run their mouth with things that they do know we're gonna tell you about actual winter. Chrome sitting in Vancouver Island with his zero degrees is the cold weather. We're minus 40 is our coldest temperature so far in our rig. We'll give you some real insight on, on the ranges of it all. If you're living in California or Arizona, most of my information will be irrelevant. I apologize. <laughs> so for the reality of uh, different heater options, diesel, propane, gasoline, Mr. Buddies, all of that. There's a few big things to keep in mind. What's your fuel source? How permanent of an installation do you want? Uh, your location of what type of weather you're gonna do. And a really important one, depending on your fuel source, is what elevation levels you're gonna be at. Uh, some people don't realize that that's gonna impact things. Uh, in our Sprinter behind me, we have a S-Bar D2 diesel heater. Some of our clients now we're installing the new the S bar S2 heater, which is same as the existing, but it's been upgraded with brushless motors and built-in high altitude kits. And I can see Chrome's eyes rolling into the back of his head <laughs> as I say all of this. <laughs> but ultimately, it comes down to budget, the type of rig you have, the type of weather, and where you're gonna go. There is no one heater option. Uh, we will always caution all of our clients People think they need to be worried about carbon monoxide poisoning in their rigs. Um, for those that don't know, it's actually oxygen deprivation that tends to be the bigger problem. High five for saying that. <laughs> so oxygen deprivation means when you have a heat source that is consuming the air inside your vehicle to burn, to make heat, to make a fire, it is consuming oxygen. And when you are in a conceal sealed van, or vehicle and you are burning up your oxygen, this is where we hear sad stories on the news. So if you are using a heat source that has a flame, that has something actively inside your rig, ventilation is imperative. It is non-negotiable. If you're gonna be using a Mr. Buddy heater, if you're gonna have a propane heater, uh, Chrome will tell you about his roof vent that's always cracked. If you don't have a roof vent, you need to have a window open. It sounds counterintuitive that I'm heating and I'm bleeding heat, but it's really, really, really important to keep that in mind. So that's part of the reason people decide to lean towards the S-Bars and the Webastos uh, and certain uh, propane installs that's, that come from the RV world, is combustion happens outside the vehicle. So that means none of the air from inside your van is being used. This also helps a bit with the condensation factor as well. So what I'll do is I'm gonna show you our heater because I have a bit of a story on heater placement. Want to come see? So when you talk about S-Bars or Robastos in vans, if you've seen a van tour, the most common place you'll see them installed is right here under the seat. What you'll notice in ours is that's now an empty hole. And there's an important reason for that. 
a lot of rigs when you go do the online research when we were building our van out in 36 days back in 2018 everyone talks about that's where you put heaters turns out nobody else was staying at minus 40 for two weeks and so when you put your heat up there and then you go put your water and batteries at the very very back of your rig potentially under a platform bed like us you're not getting heat to some of the most imperative places we all want to be warm and cozy but the reality if you're actually doing winter van life is you need to make sure your water system doesn't freeze and you don't want your batteries freezing because they will not charge and discharge correctly so in ours we relocated our heater after our first winter and all of our clients have the advantages now of we install them right the first time. Down here, below my computer, this is one of our vents for our S-Bar heater. The heater itself is actually hidden inside a closet. My empty closet. So in the bottom, you can see we have the S-Bar D2. This is centrally located so that there is ducting to go under the bed and to go out to the living space. All of this is a long-winded way of saying regardless of whether it's an S-Bar or a propane system or a Webasto, is think about placement. And I'm gonna make Chrome talk a little bit about his planning on where to place his as he's adjusting and settling into his van. Cause it's the truth is it's an evolving process to learn this stuff. Over the last few years living in my van, I've had a couple different heating options and I have moved things around quite a bit. When I first moved in, I had one of those dreaded Mr. Buddy heaters. The reason why I say dreaded is because the heat on them is not very comfortable. It's extremely damp. Like you get up in the morning and the van is warm, but yet your blankets, they just feel like wet, like you've been sleeping in a tent all night. So when I first had it, I actually had it mounted to my door. So when I shut the door, the heater was hanging on the door. But thankfully, and it's weird to say this, thankfully my buddy heater broke and I had to go out and buy myself another heater. I bought myself the Olympian Wave 3 and I'm extremely happy with the Wave 3 because one, it was affordable. Two, it was the only other heat source that I could get at the time that I was willing to throw the money out at because not everybody's got the money to be throwing at those big expensive heaters. So for me, it just seemed to be the great bridge option for now. Don't get me wrong, I dream about those big dry heat sources because you don't have to worry about that condensation and that gross stuff dripping off of everywhere. But let me show you the situation that I'm in now. So we got this new cabinet built in my van last year and we permanently mounted the Olympian Wave 3 heater onto this wall. But the heater is pointed into the wrong side of the van. It actually needs to be pointed more into the house side of the vehicle. So my two options I have now are to put this on a swing and swing this out. But I think I'm gonna be mounting my heater now on the inside bottom of the floor here, allowing to keep my feet warm while I edit and the heat will go into the house and rise. And my fan in the back will spin everything around and kind of keep the van as warm as I can. But things change and evolve in your van. You know, when you're putting things in, I thought this was like the money spot, but turns out after one winter of it being there that I'm gonna try it right here for this winter. So as you can tell, things really evolve and change and it's a process. We've relocated our heater, cr Chrome's, re I almost said cruise. <laughs> the reality is, is it's an evolving process. People will move things, Chrome and I have relocated our heaters. So understand that's a part of the reality, not just with heaters, but all of it. So give yourself a break on all of this. One of the other things I mentioned to keep in mind when you're choosing your heat source is elevation. And the reason is, is that at different elevation, there's different oxygen levels, and that means the burn rate is different. So when in the conversation of S-Bar versus Webastos, where both have gasoline models, both have diesel models, what's the difference? And people will tend to lean towards a price point. It's the obvious deciding factor. When we're doing consults, one of the things that tends to swing people over to the S-Bar side, over Webasto, is altitude kit. And what that means is uh, the ability for the system to automatically adjust your fuel rate. In a Webasto, it can be adjusted for elevation. You have to do it manually. My problem with that is I can't even say it. You need to have an alt altimeter. Alt alt you're going to tell me. Altimeter, I believe, is the correct terminology for it to know what elevation you are at and then adjust your fuel source to that level. If you get it wrong, uh, my husband starts talking about leaning out motors and carbon buildup and burning. It's not good. It's annoying. And so S-bars have 
um, an altitude kit and it's automatic. So we have one inside tucked inside this closet and it means when I'm out in Vancouver, I'm in the Rockies, I'm in Arizona where you can do one drive and swing, I think it's 9,000 feet of elevation in a couple hours. We're not needing to keep track of what elevation we are. For us, that was really, really important. Um, luckily for propane systems, you don't have some of those same adjustments. Um, unless you're dealing with the buddy heaters, you'll see some of those struggle at elevations if the oxygen levels are different. Ultimately, all of this is a process. There isn't one right answer. There are lots of options and ways to go about this. And if you can give yourself time to figure out what one works for you, as much as Chrome came to the conclusion that the Mr. Buddy was wrong, it's way better to start on the lower end and make adjustments upwards then go spend the four, five, six thousand dollars some people spend on heating systems. I haven't even touched on in, in the heated floors. I don't know how much those cost. If you're not wanting to get into that, or you don't need to get into that, that is money way better spent elsewhere. If you are looking for that, you should call us. <laughs> <laughs> the last little thing I, I do want to emphasize, uh, we talked about ventilation and why you want to have that. The other one is circulation. And so we have the same thing. Chrome fell in love with our fan. I'll, I'll take credit. Chrome fell in love because we had one. Not him, us. These fans, you think about fans being really important for when it's hot out. They're arguably more important when it's cold. This stirs the air. This helps you reduce your hot spots and your cold spots. Um, and it can feel a lot nicer in the van. So for us, ventilation and circulation are really important and take time to decide on your placement. Just because for S-bars and Webastos, everyone puts them under their, their passenger seat, doesn't mean that's right for you. Just because every Sprinter owner puts a, an S-bar in, doesn't mean you have to. And for everyone with a gasoline vehicle that's now wondering, I've talked all about S-bars, um, you can install dedicated fuel tanks into your rig. So for ProMasters and Transits, um, we build um, separate diesel tanks and that's only for your heater. Ultimately, my whole message is there are options, there are ways to go about this. Do your research, take your time, and feel free to ask questions. Have a good one, guys. I think Madison knocked this video right out of the park today. It's pretty great to sit down with a professional van builder and hear them say that starting off simple and starting off slow is exactly how you're supposed to start this lifestyle. Instead of making all these big expensive mistakes because you don't know yet, you don't know what it's like to live in a space this small. So if you can only afford $100 right now and buying yourself a Mr. Buddy heater is where you're gonna start, then that's where you're gonna start. Much like Madison said, it's better to start there and upgrade as you evolve, because you will evolve. Once you stop paying rent, you're gonna have a bigger smile on your face, you're gonna have more money kicking around, and at that point, you can trade in your $100 Mr. Buddy heater, you can donate it to another van dweller that may need some starting heat, and then you can evolve your van and upgrade to a heavier heat source at that time. Hey guys, that's where I started. I started with the Mr. Buddy, now I got a Wave 3, and who knows what's next for me? Maybe it's an S-Bar.